Um, and I, I guess if you could just start by by sharing with me, I know that you focus on uh, K-12 education in your position as the state superintendent. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, if you could just share your uh, your thoughts on uh, what happened at, uh, at MSU on Monday night. Well, it's a complete tragedy, and it's in a series of tragedies that we've had in this country over a period of decades. In pre-K-12 education, this goes from Columbine up. And uh, yesterday was the fifth anniversary of the tragedy in Parkland, Florida. Uh, but we've had a series of these, Columbine, Edinburgh, uh, Paducah, uh, Parkland, Newtown, uh, Oxford, uh, 14 months ago, almost 15 months ago. And it's time for it to stop. It's long past time that our state legislature pass meaningful, common sense gun safety reform. So there is, a, I'm sure you're familiar, the state legislature put together a committee uh, and took a look at ways to try and make school safer. And there's been a lot of talk about it, especially in the last couple of days. A lot of it has to do with mental health, a lot of it has to do with safety planning. I don't think there's one word in there about guns. Um, what are your opinions as far as those recommendations that are being bounced about and, you know, whether you think that's enough? Well, we most assuredly have to deal with children's mental health. Um, we are catching up in this state relative to children's mental health. Five years ago, there was nothing in the state school aid act for children's mental health. Now there's $361 million in the State School Aid Act for children's mental health, and we're working to build out a comprehensive children's mental health system. But in addition to that, we need meaningful, common sense gun safety reform in the state. They're not mutually exclusive. They go hand in glove. They're both necessary. Do you think, you know, the, uh, and again, those those recommendations, it seems to me puts the burden on the school to help protect kids, come up with better planning, come up with more drills, but it doesn't seem to uh, focus on kind of the, the the prevention, right? The let's not give people guns so they can't go shoot people in the first place. Is that is that more of what you'd like to see? Well, we we we've advocated for months. The state board of education, I, the department of education that we need to require background checks on all sales, including sales at gun shows and other private sales, that we need to enact a child access prevention law that holds gun owners accountable for the safe storage of firearms so you can't have happen or you reduce the likelihood that what happened in Oxford happens in Oxford. Preventing sales of firearms to people who have been reported to law enforcement is dangerous to themselves and others, requiring a waiting period of at least three days after a gun purchase before a gun can be taken home, imposing criminal penalties or fines for those who buy firearms for another person, requiring a person to be at least 21 to purchase an assault style weapon, and then finally establishing um, extreme risk protection orders through the court for, for people who are particularly um, uh, dangerous to either themselves or others. These are all necessary elements to keep us safe. We absolutely need to continue to improve on our mental health supports, not simply in pre K-12, pre but at the university level and in the community. But in addition to that, we need to work on gun safety. I see that you're Dr. Rice, and so you've got a lot of uh, background in education in, in the area of uh, uh, of education. I'm wondering if pre-Columbine, you ever thought you'd be in a position where you would, you know, hold a high-ranking education post and yet have to focus part of your agenda on gun safety? Well, I started in public schools in the 80s. And um, I don't recall a school shooting at the time. I recall shootings on the street um, associated with the gun trade, with with uh, the drug trade. But I do not recall a shooting in public schools until Columbine in 1999. And we're coming up to what I believe is the 23rd anniversary of Columbines. We've had almost a quarter of a century of these uh, horrific acts. And I might add that 
what is particularly startling to uh, to those of us are a couple of things that are particularly startling. One, the greater prevalence in the United States than in others, because the greater permissiveness around guns in the United States relative to other um, countries. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is, is that traditionally in our country, even though there were more shootings than in other industrialized nations, um, there were particular institutions that appeared to be more sanctuary-like than others. And I'm talking about, for example, pre-K-12 schools. I'm also talking about faith-based institutions. But in the last quarter of a century, from Columbine on, there's been a chipping away of those uh, sanctuaries. And though I continue to believe that schools and um, uh, faith-based institutions are are safer than broader communities, that cold comfort to those who have lost loved ones associated with these tragedies. And again, it's time for our state legislature to act. It well past time. Let me, uh, that was one of my two next questions. Are you hopeful now that given a, a Democratic legislature uh, and a, the, the Democratic governor, which we, we had, that we might now be in a space where some of the reform that you're calling for is actually possible? I, I believe strongly um, it, that this legislative leadership and Governor Whitmer are going to work together to to drive this to um, to to some improvement, I, I believe that we're going to get some common sense gun reform out of this this time. But I do believe that the longer that we wait, the less likely that that will take place. In the wake of Oxford, fourteen and a half months ago, there were promises made about hearings and and uh, putting uh, gun safety legislation up for a vote. Those promises were not kept. They need to be kept this time. We need to have um, we need to have not only hearings on this, but prompt action, prompt votes, and positive votes on these um, on these common sense gun safety reforms. Are you looking forward to a day where you can get back to uh, reading, writing, and arithmetic? I think schools have become more complicated in the last four decades. Um, I think. Um, our communities, our societies have become more complicated. I think we have a responsibility to take care of one another better than perhaps we did um, a decade ago, decade and a half ago, two decades ago. And so um, I think that that complexity is going to manifest itself in schools as well as outside of schools. We have to address that complexity with um, with some tougher standards around uh, gun ownership, uh, gun usage, particularly around those who are either younger, number one, or who have shown themselves to be dangerous to self or others.